everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. We have a wonderful recipe demo today from Nick DeVoren of Local Spicery. He's going to be making something that will be perfect for your Super Bowl spread. It's a spice I've never heard of, and I can't pronounce it. It's spelled Z-Hug, but it's pronounced Zhug or something like that. He'll explain it. Please welcome Nick to the show. I, I've never heard that word before. Hi. Hey, AJ. How are you today? I am doing great. Uh, is this what you're going to make for your Super Bowl party? So we aren't doing a Super Bowl party, but uh, this is what I'm doing for dinner. And I'll talk a little bit about this. This is uh, this is one of my favorite flavors. Um, it is. And it's, and I know it's an overused term, but it is a quintessential flavor from the Middle East. Uh, my uh, my first interest introduce introduction to this dish was on my first trip to the Middle East probably 25 years ago. And uh, at a big fancy restaurant, they, they brought out these, uh, these bowls of a green mixture, looked like a pesto and some bread. And, uh, and it just wowed everybody at the table because when you put it in your mouth, it was instantly spicy and tangy and zingy and, uh, and it just had a whole lot going on. And uh, it's a great flavor for people uh, starting out in a, in the, uh, in, in a whole food plant-based diet, trying to go salt-free because it hits all those tones that compensate for, uh, for salt. It's got, it's got acid, uh, it's got heat, uh, uh, it's got sour. Um, so, uh, so that's one of the reasons I like it, but it, it's just a spectacular flavor. In fact, the flavor of this dish is so great that I don't know, a lot of people know this, but I actually, I made a, uh, a dry spice blend that we call uh, by the same name. Uh, and I'll, I'll get to the name in just a second because it's kind of fun. The, uh, the name of the, of the dish is spelled Z apostrophe H U G. And my daughter likes to pronounce it Z hug, but the apostrophe actually is a glottal stop. And it's been described to me that it sounds like clearing your throat. So in Arabic, Arabic I think it's Zhug. <laughs> Uh, Zhug is, is a little bit easier to say softer on the palate, but still gets the idea across. Um, Zhug is, uh, uh, it's one of those ridiculously easy things. You'll, you'll see uh, uh, when I'm making it, it literally takes minutes to throw together. Uh, when people see it, they think it's very familiar, uh, but when they put it in their mouth, it just goes, wow. Um, uh, it's something that we use a lot. We use it uh, and we'll, we'll talk about different ways to use both the, uh, the, the wet condiment as well as my dry ingredient, but it is such a, it's a flavor, you know, like Americans with their, with their chili powder, uh, uh, the use of zhug on almost everything that we, uh, we cook, it brings a, uh, it brings a, a Middle Eastern flavor to it. And I'm going to start a little differently than I, than I usually do. I'm going to start at the, at the end and, and work and work uh, to the beginning. This is the finished product. This is the zhug. Uh, as you can see, it is a is a beautiful uh, green kind of a kind of a pesto consistency. Um, uh, it is when served in the Middle East. It is quite hot. Uh, I tone it down, but I like you know me. I'm a, I'm a flavor guy. I like big flavors, and I love the flavor of chilies. So what I do is I tone down the hot chilies, and I bring in some some uh, some sweet soft chilies. So you still get that really strong green chili flavor, but it's not too hot. And in fact, I think the batch I'm going to make today, I'm going to hold off on the hot chili altogether. I'll show you, uh, I'll show you the hot chilies that I do use. But uh, my wife asked me to bring this home for tonight, and she has an idea for it that she uh, she wants to play with the heat herself. Um, the only thing that I do in advance with this is I'll do a, a, an emulsion of. Uh, you know, in, in this is uh, it's just a tablespoonful of, uh, of, of some tahini and uh, and the juice from a lime. And you can use lemons or limes. If you go online, most of the recipes uh, call for lemons. But in this case, these are uh, lovely Persian limes, which are you know completely correct for the region. And uh, I've, I've had it in, in the Middle East both ways. Um, most recipes you'll see call for, uh, for olive oil, but I use this emulsion instead. And actually the, the flavor of the tahini is absolutely correct for zhug. And uh, in fact, in the, when we get to the, the flavor profile, I put a little bit of caraway seed in, which gives it even more of a nutty flavor. And I like that little nutty flavor in the background, which adds just a little more depth and a little more fun to it. 
Um, we're uh, the only thing, the only equipment that I'm going to be using is a, is a very basic uh, 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 food processor. This is just a, a little ninja, whatever is your favorite. And uh, I, I prep most of the ingredients, but as you'll see, very, very coarse chop. You know, the, the, uh, the herbs I've just chopped down to large leaves, basically just big enough that I can get them stuffed in here uh, 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 pleasantly. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit before I put this all together because it really happens so fast and the second is done, you guys will stop watching. <laughs> I want to talk about uh, uh, how you use Zhug and how we like to use Zhug. And I'll start with tonight's dinner. Uh, it's going to be something very simple. You know, we have uh, in our refrigerator, we have some tremini mushrooms and we have some spinach and we were going to do just a saute. But with a simple saute like that, you put a dollop of the Zhug on top and it completely changes the flavor profile and it changes it into an exotic, exciting dish. And that'll be our dinner. Uh, we put jug on everything. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it, I'll put it on a, I always start with baked potatoes, but we eat a lot of potatoes. Uh, put it on baked potato. You, uh, you can put it over uh, uh, oven roasted vegetables. Um, uh, you can put it in, uh, in wraps and sandwiches. Uh, you know, I, 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 I guess I would challenge the, uh, the, the AJ verse out there uh, to come up with their own ideas, because in, in the Middle East, this is considered a basic, um, basic condiment that is used in everything. And, uh, you know, with the, the oh, uh, hummus, it just loves hummus. Uh, sometimes I'll serve hummus with just a dollop of the jug on top. Sometimes I'll blend the jug in with the hummus. So the hummus is, is a jug flavored hummus. Uh, you know, just go on and on and on. You, you could wind me up and you'd never stop me if you want me to talk about what, what I use, what I put with Jug and what it goes well with. So, so the basic ingredients, and for those that want to, to, to find a recipe, we have a recipe up on our website right now at the, at the, on our blog site. Uh, just go to www.localspicery.com. Scroll down, you'll see, you'll see a big picture on the left-hand side of the screen of, uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's basil, but it says blog. And when you click in, it has all of our recipes there. And this is up uh, as of this morning. So this is, the, uh, this is a head of, uh, of cilantro that I've uh, washed and coarsely chopped. And this is a head of uh, Italian parsley. You can use any kind of parsley. You can use virtually any herbs that you want, whatever you happen to have. A little mint would be very nice. Uh, you know, if you have uh, if you have some oregano or some thyme, that'd be great. Um, I tend to always uh, lead with the cilantro because it's 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 such a wonderful flavor, and it and if you know you can you can say that it's quintessentially uh, uh, Central American, Middle Eastern, uh, Thai, whatever. Everybody uses cilantro. So we got the herbs in here. This is. Uh, 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 four cloves of garlic, and you can just see when I say coarsely chopped, it's just enough to let the uh, the, the blades get a bite into them in the uh, in the blender. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to put some I'm going to put some uh, uh, lime juice in. This is just the juice of one lime. Nick, how does how does this spice compare to sumac? Um, uh, so, like sumac, it has an acidy, uh, a tangy flavor to it. Uh, it's a much bigger spicy flavor. When you see the profile of the spices I put in this, we you know we put uh, we put cumin and coriander and uh, and uh, cardamom, and I put a little bit of uh, caraway in it as well. So uh, this is going to be a, a you know a stronger flavor than the sumac. But uh, when you go to the dry spice blend, it works like the sumac because of the sour, sour flavor in uh, uh, compensating for, for a lack of salt for people who aren't used to eating salt. Um, one thing that I do add in, this, in the, the dry blend, because the, the acid flavor is so important to, uh, to Jug, it's one of the very few blends that I put uh, uh, citric acid into. Um, you know, as a, just a matter of course, I tend to, to really try to stay away from things that are highly, uh, uh, highly processed. Uh, that's why you very rarely see me use uh, uh, nutritional yeast. You rarely see me use uh, citric acid. One thing I will say about citric acid, um, <clears throat> it sounds like such a lovely ingredient. You have, you have ideas of, of lemons and limes. 
uh, the vast majority, well over 90% of the citric acid in the world uh, comes from China. It's, uh, it's made in laboratories uh, from black mold. It is not a pleasant ingredient. I mean, it comes out as something that tastes okay, but it doesn't feel okay to me. Uh, you can get citric acid that's made the old way. Uh, they used to make it from, uh, from citrus. Uh, now most of it is made from, uh, from sugar cane. Uh, the stuff that I get is organic and is made uh, uh, from sugar cane and it's uh, made in Belgium. Uh, so it's, you know, in my mind, uh, it is still highly processed, but uh, it's a step away from uh, made from black mold in a, uh, in a, in a laboratory in China. Um, so now we're going to get to the spices. Um, and here we're going to be dealing in mostly teaspoons. I'm going to do a teaspoon each. Of, uh, of coriander seed pre-ground, of uh, cumin pre-ground, and then a half teaspoon each of the cardamom and the caraway. So if you don't happen to have caraway seed uh, on, your, on your spice shelf, you don't have to buy it. You can just double off on the cardamom or, or just do a half, just, just skip the, the caraway altogether. But it does give it a really nice uh, nutty flavor. I, I like it quite a bit. Well, you know, I, I recently started eating dill seed in in my in my ranch dressing, and dill seed kind of reminds me of caraway seed. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think they're very similar, and uh, and both of them they have kind of that that acrid sense that is so satisfying as a flavor. All right, and there's my cumin, and then a half teaspoon each cardamom, cardamom. Oh. I'm the happiest man in the world on the days when we're milling cardamom here. It is just one of my all time favorite aromas. Not only clears the, uh, not only clears the, clears the, the, no, the nose, but it clears the head. Yeah, that was I've, I think I've said this before, but uh, um, in Ayurvedic medicine, uh, cardamom just as, a, as an aroma in aromatherapy is, uh, is used as a uh, uh, antidepressant. And I, I totally believe it. Try it sometime. Just open the jar and put it up to your nose and, and it'll bring a smile to you. All right, so that's everything that's on the list of ingredients, not including this emulsion of uh, one of the lemons and the, uh, and the tahini, all right? So I just put it in here. And I'm just gonna pulse this a little, really. I want to make sure everything gets, gets chopped up nicely. Mostly I'm worried about the garlic getting cut up and the spices getting blended throughout. But if I don't have big chunks, I did it wrong because, you know, it's the consistency is really important in this dish. You don't want it to be smooth like baby food. So, so, so you can see, you can still see in there some whole leaves. I don't know if you can see, but there's still some whole leaves to it. A little few, a few stems but mostly it's really just kind of blended well. The, uh, uh, the garlic that I put in has minced, been minced down to, uh, to very fine pieces. And then I'm gonna put our emulsion in. And the great thing about these emulsions, I, I bet a lot of people that are watching this uh, have more experience than I do, but what I love about them is the way that, uh, you know, the acids uh, break down the, uh, the fats in the tahini and then they combine. So even though you know it's people refer to it as an emulsion, it's really not even technically an emulsion because for it to be an emulsion, you have to have two particles that won't combine. And in this case, there are two things that in theory shouldn't. But through the magic, of chemistry. just want just want to know there's some guy watching live. I don't know if he's a troll. He goes by the name Thomas Allen. He says, oh, I love your don't, products, Nick. Don't listen to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've got the uh, the emulsion in. And now it all, it all comes together. And I think I promised five minutes, but I bet we're, we're, uh, we're running at about two so far. This is, there's no reason not to, uh, to make this whenever you want it because it comes together so quickly. It's so simple. It uses ingredients most of us have in our house. these down a little more. We're very nearly there. Oh, I know, I forgot something. Hang on. I knew it. 
I promised you guys chilies and I skipped them all together. So what I've got for chilies, usually for a jug, <clears throat> um, you use Serrano chilies. And, uh, uh, you know, the recipe to make it, uh, uh, you know, accurate to the way it is in the Middle East, I'll, I'll usually use two to three Serrano chilies. Um, if I want, want people other than myself to eat it, I'll just do one Serrano chili and it gives it, you know, a, a, a mild lip, uh, lift. And then to fill in the flavor, and also it, it adds a little bit of liquid to the mixture. I'm just gonna take this, this is a, uh, uh, an Anaheim chili. It's a, uh, it's a thin skin green chili. They're uh, derived from uh, the wonderful state of California. And they were uh, cultivated specifically uh, to be a very low heat chili. They started out uh, in New Mexico as the New Mexico chilies, or some people refer to them as hatch chilies, and uh, uh, cultivated to, to reduce the heat as much as possible. So Anaheim's have a very low heat content. As a lot of you listened to me before know, uh, uh, when it's allowed to ripen all the way to red, you get a very, very sweet, tangy red chili with almost no heat whatsoever, at least which we sell. So I'm just, you know, just really coarsely chopping this and we're going to put it in there. And you'll notice I, I, uh, I, I cut the stem off and I pulled all of the, uh, all the seeds out for two reasons. One, seeds aren't a very pleasant thing to have in the dish. Um, but secondly, seeds don't do much for flavor. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people will tell you the seeds are where all the heat is. The reality is if you separate the seed from the membrane around it, the seeds have almost no flavor and no heat at all. It's the membrane that captures around the seeds that holds all the heat. I'm gonna just slice this, uh, this Serrano open to show you, but I'm not gonna put it in. Some, like I said, I promised my wife I'd bring this home without, uh, without any added heat. But you can see inside of the chili, there's, uh, uh, there's seeds and that you've got these, these white fins and the fins when they dry, they become the membrane I'm talking about. If you want the flavor without the heat, just take a sharp nose spoon like a teaspoon and scrape those out and you'll be doing great. All right, so let's, Run through. We'll mix the uh, mix the chili. And all that's left for me to make dinner tonight is a, a quick saute. And everybody's happy. Let me uh, just push this down a little. Mm. Oh man! So if uh, if green had an aroma, that's, that, that's what I'm smelling right now. I've got unplugged, but I'm gonna call that good. Uh, let's put it in a purple dish. Now, so this is our jug. Now, what do you, why do I say use this for your Super Bowl? How do you use this for your Super Bowl? You know, I would put a bowl of this out with, next to a, uh, uh, a bowl of hummus and you can have uh, chips or uh, even better, some uh, uh, sliced vegetables, you know, just some, some carrots and some celery, but, or, or go exotic and put some cauliflower and some. There it is. That's my presentation. Isn't it lovely? And it's delicious. Uh, so I, I would just put it out as a dip uh, like I said, you can you can use it as a dollop on top of your hummus. You can add it to your hummus to make a uh, uh, a jug flavored hummus. Um, you can put it on almost anything that you're going to be making for uh, for a party like a Super Bowl party, and uh, and people will ask you about it. It's a it's a conversation maker, and uh, and it, and uh, you know people really key into it, and they, they they love the idea that it's a you know something quintessentially from the uh, from the Middle East. Um, so I want to take just a couple of minutes and say, what's the difference then between this beautiful uh, wet uh, product and the, the dry ingredient? You'll taste them side by side. I hope you'll agree with me that I've captured the flavor of the jug in my dry rub. Uh, <clears throat> we use the dry rub. It is, it is as close to an everything spice as anything that I make. 
Uh, it has, you know, even before, uh, before I got introduced to our uh, whole food plant-based friends, it has always been a salt-free blend for us. That's because the, the uh, uh, citric acid does such a great job of, of, uh, of covering that. Uh, I, we put it on everything. We'll sprinkle it on top of vegetables before we, uh, before we oven roast them. Uh, it also goes well on any kind of a potato. Um, oh, I'm going to swing back. Another group, Evelyn had a great idea. We're going to do soon with this. Take the, uh, take the wet jug, add a little bit more uh, uh, olive oil or I'm just, olive oil, uh, 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 lemon juice and, uh, and, and break it down into, uh, into a dressing. It would be a wonderful addition on top of a Buddha bowl for those of you that frequently do Buddha bowls. Um, and you could use the, the spice blend much the same way. It wouldn't be wet, it would be like a dry ingredient. Uh, uh, my daughter uses the jug, and I guess the important thing to say about how to use the, the dry ingredient, uh, it's a spice blend that you can use both for finishing to sprinkle on top of things, as well as for cooking to go inside the dish while you're preparing it. Uh, my daughter makes a shakshuka, you know, which we all know is it's uh, it's it's eggs that are that are baked inside a a, a, so, a, a rich spicy uh, uh, tomato sauce, and her main flavoring for it is the jug. And I bring that up in this context not because we're going to use eggs, but uh, I have a great recipe for a shakshuka where instead of eggs you put dollops of, uh, of grits. So you get, uh, you know, little grit dumplings uh, layered in the shakshuka. Maybe maybe uh, one of these months I'll do that as my dish. It's delicious. And, uh, and as I like, it's a big, big flavor. So that is your introduction to Jug. If any of you have some experiences you want to share, we'd love to get emails. Tell us how you use it. You know, in a lot of ways, this dry spice blend was an, an experimental blend, a lot like the pepperoni was. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. We love to hear how people are using it. So that's what I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, that sounds great. And I love your idea of uh, thinning it down for salad dressing because that, that would be delicious. Yeah, well, we're going to play with that tonight. I'll let you know how that goes. But, but it, yeah, it will be a great, the flavor is spot on. Right. And I know, you know, I know what you made a recipe, you're making a recipe for next month, second Friday. Uh, I forget what spice you're using. It's, it's so what we're making for uh, for next month is going to be uh, adobada, which is a, a central Mexican uh, uh, marinade. Uh, it's a it's a chili marinade, but we use we use, you know, low to medium hot chilies. Uh, it's it's again, it's one of those things that is typically thought of as for meats, but it is just such a great flavor on uh, on uh, vegetables. And in this case, particularly what I'm doing is. I'm marinating sweet potatoes and then cooking the sweet potatoes in a uh, 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 in an air fryer. Uh, so that that's a lot of fun and it's, it's a good introduction for people who have not cooked with dried chilies because it's it's a little bit of a step to uh, to rehydrate chilies and then put them into the uh, into the marinade. But it's it is delicious and you want to talk big flavors. It's a big flavor. Wow, that sounds great. Well, thanks so much. I can't wait to see what you're cooking up for us next month. <laughs> thanks AJ it's great to see you as usual same here and thanks everyone for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live please come back in 30 minutes when my guest is Jane Velez Mitchell and she is going to be talking about Unchained TV a free vegan streaming service which you can get as an app maybe you'll make a cooking show and you can be on her network Nick well I, I don't know that I can rise to that level but I'm, it's definitely something I'd, I'd, I'd love to watch we like Jane Unchained Great. Thanks. Take care, everybody. See you in a half.